Hello, Brad Schelke here at Conversations with Mormons. This is part six of Melting Meg's Heart. Meg's big sin is missing the mark of righteousness. Her self-condemnation resulted from doing just that. Our topic today is, what would have happened if Meg had aimed at righteousness? We know the answer because I led her to do just that by asking her to compare me to Jesus, who embodies righteousness. She couldn't help but smile as she said that compared to Jesus, I wasn't doing so well. She smiled again when I told her the words of a quiet woman who laughed after saying I was a total failure compared to Jesus. Both women expressed gladness without any sense of condemnation or judgmentalism toward me while thinking about my moral failings. They didn't know why they were glad, but I did. The prophet Isaiah lived 700 years before Jesus. He declares that God is well pleased for His righteousness sake to exalt the law and make it glorious. That may be my favorite Bible verse because of all the surprises it contains. Isaiah's words mean that the joy of the Lord is about moral flawlessness. Meg bears God's image, and when she joined God in what makes Him glad, she smiled. Even though that's good information, I didn't tell her. I needed to first help Meg bypass her pride to experience a related principle of righteousness, that failure isn't the cause of our self-condemning or judgmental thoughts. The true cause is counterfeit standards we use to measure the failure we see. Meg said she should always measure people by Jesus, by never doing evil, by being morally flawless. She then said that while condemning herself, she was measuring herself her way and not by Jesus. I then asked if she would have experienced self-condemnation if she had measured herself by Jesus instead of by her low standards. She wouldn't have and might even have laughed at herself for failing. I've asked many, many hundred people this, and people say the same thing. They seem surprised at not noticing before the simple connection of self-condemnation and judgmentalism to lowering our standards from flawlessness. Why do people say this? God created human nature with a fundamental principle. That principle is dependence. We love independence and are slow to learn dependence as the way of life. Here's how dependence works. When Meg sees herself in a good way, she treats herself in a good way. When she sees me in a good way, she treats me in a good way. When she sees an obnoxious person in a good way, she treats that person in a good way. All the evil any of us do results from violating that principle by disconnecting from seeing a person in a good way. To broaden Meg's understanding, I also asked if she had experienced impatience toward anyone at USU. She had. I asked her to think of one of those people and then asked if in the moment of her impatience, she was measuring that person by her good standard of being flawless like Jesus. She smiled and said the person simply didn't behave as she desired. What if Meg had been comparing that person to Jesus? Would she have experienced impatience? Meg said no. I've asked this of many hundred people, and everyone seems surprised to say what Meg said. Why did this discovery surprise Meg? It's simple. Her pride hates the principle of dependence because her pride craves credit for her good behavior. This means that her pride hinders her from self-reflecting honestly about how life works, how dependence works, how right relationships work. I didn't tell her these things. Instead, I helped her discover them by bypassing her pride. After each discovery, I expressed identification with her in our common need to be honest about whatever the point was. Righteousness means that all things are in the right place. Since that includes both dependence and moral flawlessness, Meg and I cannot find righteousness in ourselves. We need to look outside. To look inside ourselves is counterfeit righteousness, which is better known as self-righteousness. I didn't use the word righteousness with Meg, and I didn't tell her she was self-righteous, even though she was. In any case, she couldn't just stop being self-righteous. She needed to discover true righteousness and trust it. Up to this point, I had helped her learn to aim at righteousness in two ways and taste the joy of the Lord. First, she discovered that it's good and right to see herself as a person and never as an object. Second, she discovered she should always aim at moral flawlessness. Next week, we'll explore the third aspect of righteousness that I led Meg to discover that she needed to aim at, that Christ already put away all evil by the sacrifice of Himself. That is the place of fullness of joy. Until then, please join me in thanking God for the principle of dependence, that when you see others in a good way, you treat them in a good way. Welcome to the conversation.